All right, this video is about mass and gas volume relationships in chemical reactions. First, let's quickly go over what we're going to learn in this video. We'll learn about yield and limiting reactant, Avogadro's law, molar volume, and the gas laws. Now these last three apply just to gases, whereas the first two apply to everything in chemistry. Let's dig in by going over a general strategy for solving chemistry problems. First thing we need is the equation for the chemical reaction. The second thing we're going to need is the mole ratios of the reactants to products or multiple reactants or multiple products to each other. We're also going to need to convert any given information to mole. We need to ask ourselves, is there a limiting reagent in the situation at hand? And finally, we need to convert from reactants to products. Actually, there's one last step. Does the final answer need to be converted from moles back to some other human scale unit? Let's try it out on a sample problem. If we have 7 grams of nitrogen and 4 grams of hydrogen gas, how many grams of ammonia can be produced? Well, first thing we need is the equation for the reaction, and here it is. By the way, this is what's famously known as the Haber process for manufacturing ammonia. Next, we need to look at the mole ratios, which are right there in the equation for us. For every mole of nitrogen we use, we need 3 moles of hydrogen to react with it. For every mole of nitrogen, or every three moles of hydrogen, we'll get two moles of ammonia coming out. Next, we need to convert our givens to moles. And we were given grams of gas, so here we're converting it to moles using the method where we write out all the units explicitly and cancel them out just like canceling out numbers. Now we have to ask ourselves, is there a limiting reagent? Meaning, do we have enough of both? Since nitrogen and hydrogen react in a 1 to 3 ratio, if we had half a mole of nitrogen, that means we would need 1.5 moles of hydrogen. We have that. Conversely, if we wanted to use all 4 moles of hydrogen, we would need slightly more than 1 mole of nitrogen, which we don't have. So nitrogen is the limiting reactant in this situation. For every mole of nitrogen that goes in, 2 moles of ammonia come out. But, of course, the problem asked for grams of ammonia. So here we need to multiply by the molar mass of ammonia. There are three kinds of yield. The first one is theoretical, and we calculate it just like we did our example problem. If we had 4 grams of hydrogen gas and 7 grams of nitrogen gas, and we combine them in the Haber process, we'll get 17 grams of ammonia. This would be a theoretical yield, the maximum amount we could get if everything went perfect. In re real life, nothing ever quite works so perfectly, and we end up getting something less. This is an experimental yield, an actual real-life value. Percentage yield combines the first two. If we take the experimental yield and divide by the theoretical yield, we'll get a percentage yield. Avogadro, the same man as the numbers named after, discovered in his experiments that if we have the same volume of two different gases, that means they each have the same number of particles, as long as we're at the same temperature and pressure. This means that V molar, in other words, the volume of a gaseous mole, is the same for all gases. And at standard temperature and pressure, that volume is almost 22 and a half liters for every mole. Notice that standard temperature and pressure is zero degrees Celsius and just under one standard atmosphere. So how can this help us when we do chemistry problems? Well, because of Avogadro's law, we can treat volume ratios the same way we treat molar ratios. So here we have two and a half liters of hydrogen and three liters of nitrogen going into the Haber process. If you think about it for just a second, you realize that hydrogen gas is the limiting reagent in this situation. And because there's two moles of ammonia for every three moles of hydrogen, that means we'll get 1.7 liters of ammonia. So what properties do all gases have? Well, they have volume and pressure and temperature. But for chemistry, we need to know how all three of these are related. And for that, we look at the gas laws. There's Boyle's law, which deals with the relationship between pressure and volume, and Charles' law, which applies to temperature and volume. There's an unnamed law for the relation between pressure and temperature. There's a combined gas law that uses all three of these. And finally, there's an ideal gas law. A graph for Boyle's law, which you've probably seen before, looks like this. Unless we graph pressure against one over volume, in which case we get a straight line. This is because pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. In contrast, pressure and temperature have a direct relationship. Note, though, that temperature always has to be measured in Kelvin for these gas laws to work properly. Charles' law 
shows that volume and temperature have a direct relationship. Finally, we get the combined gas law, which you've probably seen before in middle school science. We're going to use the same thing in chemistry at the IB level, however we're going to expand that constant K. This is the ideal gas law. Pressure times volume equals number of moles times the gas constant times temperature. That's it. Thank you.